we have three stages principally, there are three milestones, um, stage one, two, two and three, and their levels of completeness of documentation. Um, we're currently uh, well into stage three, which is um, structured documentation for the project, but from the state's perspective, and you know, they've been our client, it's um, review documentation that they finally sign off on. So um, we've started that journey, and we're probably around about 30% through that. I think the difference on this project is that it was a BIM enabled uh, project and um, as we've indicated previously it's really forced a change in the way people work together, the way they collaborate. Once upon a time people could run away and hide with their, in their own little disciplines but now when we're building this model, this uh, virtual model, we're reliant on all our partners to keep up their end of the bargain. So it's no longer an architectural model, it's a, what we call a federated model. So the, the model that we all contribute to has architectural elements, it has structural elements, it has building services elements, and without those other contributions, um, the model doesn't, doesn't stand up and, and it doesn't read. Well, I think um, the, the key here is that um, there was already a substantial amount of consultation done in the process of arriving at a bid proposal. Uh, we engaged with the state through the bid process to get to uh, what is substantially a master plan which has really not changed through the uh, design development process and a facility planning solution which has had some tweaking but again has not substantially uh, changed. So uh, it's important uh, in a PPP to remember that, it, um, that, that yes there is a level of engagement um, but um, it is about getting on and the uh, private sector getting on and building uh, a facility. So yes, there was uh, engagement for the purposes of validation, uh, and then we did um, some how many, 400, 440 uh, user, engagement. user engagement. So there was quite a lot of that, but it was a validation process more than a start from a blank piece of paper and briefing the project. I think it begins essentially with the, the quality of the documentation that was produced with the bid face went in a, in a very strong position, a very healthy position with our understanding of the design uh, and the client's understanding of that. So essentially from day one we went to design development and that was taking those documents to sort of 80-90% complete with um, the, the state already on board with the, the, the sort of big design. So that meant we started very fresh, very quick. Um, and we had the same team that was from the bid phase as well. So we had that yeah. continuity, so we were up and running very quickly. Yeah. So as Ernest described, we were just validating our design for that process and tweaking and refining, but we weren't wholesale, wholesale redesigning. Yeah, Probably, as I said in my presentation, one of the key differences here is the model of care. It really is a, um, an exciting piece of work that was undertaken by uh, SA Health. We, we can't take credit for that. I mean, SA Health uh, are really the, the people who have innovated there. But from that, I think as Stuart indicated in his presentation, uh, the, the brief was open in terms of, it wasn't prescriptive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, we had to respond to this challenging model of care with a, uh, uh, an innovative uh, design. Um, but we can't take credit for um, the concept of single bed rooms, we just responded to that and I think as I said in my presentation uh, the, uh, the single bedroom that we've come up with, the design we've come up with is unique, we've re-engineered uh, the way people think about hospital uh, bedrooms uh, but at the same time we've addressed uh, the, the parameters that the brief put to us. So it begins, I mean we, we designed this from the bedroom out. We didn't start with a spaceship and shoehorn the hospital into it, we actually started with the with the most basic element, which was the bedroom, and from there uh, developed the patient journeys, developed the master planning. Uh, we believe we changed the market, particularly in Adelaide and Australia, indefinitely now. Um, our supply chain is all using the software, the technologies, the models, the consultants are very uh, well uh, developed in the use of it now. And we're now starting to see this tech use of this technology on similar projects across the country. So you've been able to kind of test it, a lot of things to think with this project that... It, it's not new in terms of the, the rest of the world. It's been used in the US and the Europe extensively for probably the last 10 years. It's certainly yeah. new to Australia. Um, and the application of it is growing very quickly. Um, we're very much um, at the front of that in terms of bringing the uh, supply chain up to speed so they can roll it out across uh, any other projects. I think the difference here, Stuart, is the scale. Uh, certainly, 
uh, what has challenged us. I mean, the, what, what, we're, what we're doing on the RA has certainly been done on other projects in this country, but very, on a, very much on a smaller scale. I think the scale that we're operating at is truly unique in this yeah. country. and the amount of stakeholders we've engaged with this scale um, it is very special. We know our entire supply chain are using this software and these technologies, which a lot of our projects will take it to a certain point and then decide, well, I'm not going to take it any further. We've taken it from that sort of cradle to grave scenario where it's used throughout the life of the project.